Joining us now to break down some of the ways that perhaps we can learn something from this weekend's shootings, Senior Culture Editor at Interactive One, David Dennis Jr. Welcome back to the Damage Report. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, I recently read your, your op-ed in News One, The Most American Day, where you talked about some of your thoughts coming out of those uh, terror attacks. So I, I wanna start off first, why was that The Most American Day? Well, in about a 24 hour span on a Saturday, we had what was pretty much a microcosm of the state of America right now. We have um, people uh, in a town in Texas uh, trying to live uh, their lives and contribute to the, uh, you know, to America by buying school supplies for their kids for the most part. Um, and they were gunned down by white supremacists. Uh, by white supremacists in that same Walmart. Uh, and Walmart also, you know, sort of represents one of the most American places you can be. It's a sign of capitalism. Uh, the CEO makes a thousand times um, how much the median uh, worker makes uh, at uh, Walmart. Walmart is also a place that has had to been drag kicking and screaming into gun reform. It's a place that still um, sells guns in a lot of their stores. Um, and you have unchecked white nationalist terror that is wreaking havoc on uh, people that don't look like him. Um, also next door, you had an African-American uh, army uh, service member who was saving children um, from the uh, gun violence. And as he had hands full of children and was trying to get them to safety, uh, police think that he's the shooter and he has to explain to them that he is innocent. And then uh, when the night is over, after everybody is trying to catch their breath from this uh, unspeakable terror that we see too often in this country, uh, either they went to sleep or they woke up the next morning uh, hearing about a shooting in Dayton, Ohio. So this is really uh, the reality of America as we see it right now. This is Saturday. This is a day that we will, uh, for the most part, a lot of people will forget in a week when the next shooting yeah. happens yeah. and next year uh, we'll forget about that. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned Glen Oakley because in all of my reading about it, I had actually not seen a profile with much information about what he did on that day. And the fact that that he was hassled, no, thankfully he wasn't shot. Um, the police were very restrained. They were able to take the shooter this time, despite having killed all those people. They, they took him in with certain types of shooters, they can always take him in. Um, but it makes me think about the intersection of race with some of what a lot of right wingers want. So they say that everybody should just have a gun so that we can have good guys with a gun. But what about certain types of good guys? What about African American good guys at events like this? Are they going to have the same chance of being mistakenly shot by police if they try to defuse a situation or take out a terrorist? Well, America for the most part has showed us that uh, there's no uh, such thing as a good guy, as a good black guy with a gun. That's not anything that we've learned uh, in the history of this country and the history of the way that police treat us. I think back to Philando Castile uh, in Minnesota, a couple of years ago who had a license to carry, who was pulled over by police who tried to show them that he had a legally obtained um, handgun and he was killed. And the police have, uh, you know, for the most part felt no uh, repercussions for this action. So when we talk about good guys with guns, that does not, that there's a certain type of good guy that we're talking about and that good guy is a white good guy. So there's no such thing as black good guys with guns. As we've seen, you know, this man was uh, putting, Oakley was putting the most, putting forth the most heroic thing you could possibly do, saving yeah. children yeah. from gunfire. And uh, his life was as in danger uh, coming across police as it was if you'd have just stayed in Walmart. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's uh, unfortunate, but probably true. Um, so uh, since the attack, we've had a couple of days and uh, we've had uh, Donald Trump has put out uh, both a statement and a couple of tweets. Um, as you've been sort of absorbing the events of the weekend, what did you think about what he's said? Um, well, Donald Trump um, is, this is typical Trump. I mean, he is uh, somebody who is taking the, the good with the bad and, and what is acceptable for him and what's acceptable for him is reaching to his base. And you know the fact of the matter is that there is no evidence that his base sees what happened in Walmart as that big of a tragedy. I mean, we've seen um, Trump at rallies in which people have yelled out, you know, shoot uh, immigrants, shoot people coming into this country, and he's laughed it off. Like this is not, you know, I'm not sure that this is something that Donald Trump sees as particularly tragic. Um, you know, he has shifted the blame to the media uh, when the fact is uh, this is all about. Um, the three most protected entities in this country, which is white men, guns, and white men with guns. And so Donald Trump uh, has no motivation to stop any of that from happening.
Here on the Damage Report, we talk a lot about the big banks and their ways of getting rich off the poor. They saturate the market, but there are other options. And I've got info on a socially and environmentally responsible financial institution that has no ATM fees, gives you cash back on every purchase. They even commit 10% of their earnings to charity. It's called Aspiration, and if you go to aspiration.com slash TYT to sign up, you'll get these perks and that's more money to spend or save or to spend, just treat yourself.